In this lesson, we are going to talk about the application of quadratic formula and how quadratic equations are used in real life. The first example is an application in physics. We have the formula h is equal to negative half g t squared plus v sub 0 t plus h sub 0 h is the height, g is the acceleration due to gravity because of earth which is 9.8 meter per square second t is the time, v sub 0 is the initial vertical velocity and h sub 0 is initial height where the trajectory is thrown outward. The question is that Part A. Create a model for the height of a toy rocket launched upward at 60 meters per second from the top of a 3 meter platform. So we are going to use the same formula. We will say h is negative half, g is 9.8 t squared plus v sub 0. v sub 0 is 60 meters per second, so 60 t plus initial height is 3. If you simplify this one, you get negative 4.9 t squared plus 60t plus 3. Part B is asking when is the rocket going to fall to, to Earth? We found that previously that h is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 60t plus 3. When the rocket hits the earth, height is 0, so this has to be 0. Now you have a quadratic equation that you have to solve for t. Using a quadratic formula, we say that t is equal to minus b, which is minus 60, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 60 squared, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times negative 4.9 times c, which is 3, divided by 2a, which is 2 times negative 4.9. If we simplify the bracket and then take the square root, we get negative 60 plus or minus 60.5, divided by 9 minus 9.8 there are two solutions positive and negative if we go with addition negative 60 plus 60.5 divided by minus 9.8 you get negative 0 0.051 if we go with negative negative 60 minus 60.5 divided by negative 9.8 we get 12.3 since time cannot be negative, this time is not accepted, so the answer is 12.3 seconds it takes for rocket to fall on Earth. Then part C says what is the maximum height of the rocket? We know that this is a quadratic function. Since A is negative 4.9 and it's negative, so the parabola opens downward, so the vertex is maximum. So what we have to do is to find the coordinate of the vertex. We know that v sub x, the x coordinate of the vertex, is negative b over 2a, which is equal to negative 60, b is 60 over 2a, which is negative 9.8. This is going to give us 6.12. So the maximum happens after 6.12 seconds. Now to find v sub y, we have to evaluate the function at 6.12. So I'm going to sub it back in the equation. I get negative 4.9 times 6.12 squared, t squared, plus 60t plus 3 if you simplify this one, you get 187 meters. 
So this means that the rocket reaches 187 meters in 6.12 seconds, which is the maximum height. The next part of the problem asks over what time interval is the height of the toy rocket greater than 150. We know that the equation represents a parabola. So if this is my h and time axis, my parabola, let's say it looks like something like this one. If this point represents 150, there are two points here, 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 or either here, representing these times. I want to know when is the height greater than 150 meters. So what I have to do is that I have to solve the following equation. Negative 4.9t squared plus 60t plus 3 greater than 150. When I move this one to the right, I get negative 4.9t squared plus 60t minus 147 greater than 0. Now, to solve the inequality, I'm going to solve negative 4.9t squared plus 60t minus 147 equal to 0. This is going to give me the lower limit here. Now, to solve this one, I'm going to use quadratic formula. I'm going to say t is equal to negative b negative 60 plus or minus 60 squared minus 4 a is negative 4.9 times negative 147 divided by 2a, which is 2 times negative 4.9. If we simplify the square root, we get negative 60 plus or minus 26.8 divided by negative 9.8. I can go either with plus or negative to add them or subtract the numerator. I get with the positive addition, I get 3.39 and with the negative, I get 8.86. This means that this is 3.39 and this one is 8.86. So as long as the time is between 8.86 and 3.39, the height of the toy rocket is going to be greater than 150 meters. The next example is a rectangular park which is in the form of as the name says rectangle and the measures are 100 meter by 60 meters now the mayor he wants to make sure that the path which is going to be made and the path is a constant width of x is not going to reduce the area of grass by more than 10%. The question is that what is the maximum allowable width of path in meters, meaning what is the maximum value for x? So, to solve this problem, now to solve the problem, we know that the area of uh, the grass is going to be 100 minus 2x times 60 minus 2x. The reason is the following. The grass area is right here. Now, it used to be 100 meter the width or the length and 60 the other side. Now, we have 1x here, 1x here, which is not grass, so 100 subtract 2x is going to be this side, and the other side is going to be 60 minus 2x. And if you multiply because it's a rectangle, you get, you get the area of the grass. Now, this area okay, cannot be uh, 
less than 90% uh, of the original one because the mayor doesn't want to reduce the area of grass by nine by 10%, meaning that you have to have 90% of the grass available. Now, 90% is 0.9, so this one has to be equal to 0.9 times the original area. The original area was 100 times 60. If we do this multiplication, we are going to find 5,400. Now, we are going to expand these two brackets and move this guy to the left. If you do the expansion and simplify, I'm going to leave it to you to do it, you're going to get 4x squared minus 320x plus 600 is equal to 0. Again, expansion is up to you and then you move 5400 to the left which is going to make it negative 5400 when you simplify you get 4x squared minus 320x plus 600 now I'm going to solve this equation using quadratic formula but before we use the quadratic formula we can see that I can divide everything by 4 so I get x squared minus 80x plus 150 is equal to 0. Now I can solve this one using quadratic formula, so it's going to be minus b, which is 80, plus or minus b squared, which is 80 squared, minus 4a, which is 1 times 150, divided by 2a, which is 2. This is going to give me 80 plus or minus 76.2 divided by 2. I can go either plus or minus. If I go by plus, I get 78.1. And if I go by minus, I get 1.9. Now, you may say, okay, we have two answers, so we can go either with the width of 78.1 or 1.9. But the problem is that if we go with 78.1, then if you look at the new dimensions, the new dimensions are 100 minus 2x and 60 minus 2x. Then the new dimension, 2 times 78.1, is going to give you a number greater than 100. So this guy, or this one, is going to be negative, which is impossible. So this is unacceptable. But what we can do is that we can go ahead and use this value, 1.9, because 100 minus 2 times 1.9 is positive, and 60 minus 2 times 1.9 is also positive. So 1.9 is the value for x. The next problem asks to find two consecutive even numbers where the product is 5624. First of all, since we don't know what are the even numbers, let's assume the first one is x, the next one is going to be x plus 2, which is the consecutive even number. The product has to be 5624. If I multiply the bracket and bring this one to the left, I get x squared plus 2x minus 56. 24 is equal to 0. Now I have a quadratic equation and I'm going to use quadratic formula to solve it. So I'm going to say x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared which is 2 squared minus 4a which is 1 times negative 56 24 divided by 2a, which is going to be 2 times 1. This is going to give me negative 2 plus or minus, then 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 56, 24, and then the square root is going to give me 150 divided by 2. There is going to be two solutions, either plus or minus. If we go with, with plus, we get negative 76, if we go with minus, 
you are going to get 74. So the two numbers, the even numbers, which are consecutive and give you a product of 56, 24 are negative 6 and negative 50, 74 or 74 and 76. The next example is talking about the right triangle. We know one one leg of a right triangle is one centi longer than the other triangle, uh, another leg. So if this is my right triangle, one leg is x, the other one is x plus one. But we know the hypotenuse is nine centimeter greater than the shorter one. So this is x plus nine. The question is, what is the length of each side? We know that by uh, Pythagorean theorem, x squared, one side squared, plus x plus one squared, is equal to hypotenuse squared, which is x plus nine squared. Now, if we expand this and then simplify it, which I'm going to leave it to you to do it, you get x squared minus 16x minus 80 is equal to 0. Now I have to use the quadratic formula to solve for x. I get minus b which is 16 plus or minus b squared which is 16 squared minus 4ac which is minus 4 times 1 times negative 80 divided by 2a which is 1. If you simplify the square root you're going to get 24 now there's going to be two solution addition and subtraction if we add them together and then divide it by 2 you get 20 if you subtract them divided by 2 you get negative 4 since x cannot be negative because of this side so negative 4 is gone so the answer is the sides are 20 x plus 1 is 21 and x plus 9 is 29 so these are the three sides and to prove that the answer is correct then you can use the Pythagorean theorem and say 29 squared is 21 squared plus 20 squared the last example talks about math which uses a digital video recorder to record Paul's kick of a soccer ball he chooses an origin on a scale and makes measurement of the height of the soccer ball at several horizontal distances from the television sque uh, screen during the playback. So what he does, he comes up with a table given here. Now, the dis when the distance is 2.5 meters from the TV, the height is 3.25, is 5, 4.8, and so forth. Now. This is an actual example in practice that you don't have the equation, but you have readings at different places, positions. What you have to do is to be able to use technology to determine an equation, or what exactly we call in practice, you have to be able to find an equation which represents the data. Now, usually what you do is that you plot the data and you look at the graph and you uh, guess, you know, what type of formula is best to fit the graph. Right now, we assume that the quadratic function can describe these table of values. So how do you use what we call a quadratic regression to come up with a formula which represents this table of value? What we do is that you either use a graphing calculator or you use Excel spreadsheet on your computer or you can go online and uh, find so many different sites, you know, to find the quadratic regression for the table of values that you have. I'm going to use a site which is out there, which is free, and I'm going to show you how you can use to find the quadratic equation which represents these values. To use the technology, I found a site 
which is hadtoknow.com slash academic slash quadratic regression calculator dot html okay now this site is free when you use this site what you are going to do is you are going to type the values of x and y as I have typed here in this table of values when you are done you are going to hit this key which says calculate quadratic regression equation and this is where you get the equation this means that this equation best represents the table of values of x and y that we had in the example so this is the equation that we are going to use for the rest of this example so remember this is one of so many sites out there that you can use to find a quadratic regression when a table of value is given. The next part of the problem is where does the soccer ball hit the ground? We already know that the equation representing this situation is given by negative 0 0.048 x squared plus 0.98 x plus 1.1 and we want this one to be equal to 0 because the ball hits the ground now again to solve this one I'm going to use the quadratic formula x is negative b which is 0 0.98 plus or minus b squared which is 0 0.98 squared minus 4ac which is 4 times negative 0 0.048 times 1.1 divided by 2a which is 2 times negative 0 0.048 now if you simplify this equation the, under the square root I get negative 0 0.98 plus or minus I get 1.08 divided by negative 0 0.096 now there is going to be two solution either addition or subtraction of the numerator if you add them you get negative 1.04 and if you subtract them you get 21.46 but we know that x the distance can't be negative so negative 1.04 is eliminated so the only answer valid one is 21.46